inendie peace chishimba dadi wanga namwalira kuna namwalira kusimba ku ana bana chichebe ku apa na hivi kuna namba nchi namba kwenye mera ba sata mazo kwenye namba kwenye miala It is a very hot day in Zambia's capital city, Lusaka, with temperatures ranging between 37 and 40 degrees Celsius. But 11-year-old Chris Chishimba does not have the luxury of seeking comfort under a shade of a tree for one reason. He is a stone crusher who needs to be where the stones are. <laughs> The plight of uh, children that are in child labor, uh, those that are on the street, those that are crushing stones, uh, has touched the hearts of many, including Jesus Christ Ministries. The children that are crushing stones uh, actually face a lot of health uh, problems. Their growth is stunted because of the hard work of crushing stones. It's so dangerous to, to them, especially when they are crushing and the stone can go into their eyes and they can even get blind. And the dust that uh, you know comes out of the stone crushing, that affects their chest. Most of them are coughing and also uh, the, uh, the eyesight is not good because of the dust. Most of these children have lost their parents uh, through HIV AIDS and uh, because of unemployment, uh, the incomes in the homes is not enough to sustain the entire household. So we see children now also going to work in order to supplement the income in the homes. Following the death of his father, Chris was left with no choice but to join an army of other children with similar backgrounds in earning a living through stone crushing. Stone crying and uh, crushing is quite very, very hard and tough. Usually it should be undertaken by adults and usually done by machines from what I've seen. But something which is done by a machine and you're going to use a child for that matter is very serious because there are various um, products that come out of crushing those stones. There are particles which come out which the children inhale which cause uh, future uh, chest problems, respiratory problems. And also, basically, those children can have an accident as they crush those stones. They can lose a finger or even a particle going into their eye. So this is quite a risky thing. Even in the face of such initiatives, poverty levels in Zambia have remained high and mirror Zambia's economic decline. Survival of the fittest by these families has meant taking greater health risks. Nearly every day, an accident occurs involving children as they attempt to copy with the hazardous work their parents are engaged in. Instead of going to school, these children go to work with their parents. Behind these extreme poverty experiences are the many human faces 
the faces of parents who must choose between taking their children to school or taking their children for work. They are deprived of basic education, or e and and even more so uh, secondary education. Of course, their future prospects don't look too bright. They will not be able to get um, jobs that pay well, non-exploitative jobs, when they grow up and become adults. And as with many other child laborers, they do suffer. Um, wearing of their bodies at, at tender age, from, from doing physical labour at tender age, they will actually wear down their bodies prematurely. So really something needs to be done for these children, apart from uh, protecting their health, also their education is very, very important. To help eradicate the problem, Jesus Cares Ministries has been removing children from stone crushing and integrating them in schools. The organization has a development center in Tendere Township in Lusaka where children salvaged from such activities as well as street kids are reformed before they are taken into mainstream education systems. It also has an action plan to reunite the children with their parents. But that is after the children have undergone psychosocial counseling. What is the Yes, another way of addition, yes, plus. Plus. The other way of this word is what? Plus. Who can come and write the side plus? What goes on here at the center? We are also keeping children whom we are rehabilitating from the street. And these children here at the center, they are 51. And this is the place where they sleep in. So you can just come and see how they sleep, how they live. children interviewed are grateful to Jesus Care Ministries for saving their lives. When we were on the street, he likes stealing, taking drugs, and robbing some things from the people. When Jesus Cares took me from the street, I came here at the center. I said they give me education and I know how to pray school. So I thank Jesus Christ for the works they are doing. So there is no school. So I ran out to the street. I start studying, begging. Jesus 
Maybe we find our friends are sleeping at night. We, de we get a razor blade and decide to, to tear their clothes. Then they are on the street. There is a terrible life that is to choose one way. Stealing to ch both two ways. Now is to choose the best one. Stealing, me I decided stealing or go to, to a center called Fountain of Hope. After that, from Fountain of Hope, Mami Simunguzi came and get us here. Then I thank Mami Simunguzi and God first because they are on the first place fountain. I never knew God. Now here, I'm now a Christian. Here at Mutendere Development Center, we just started uh, first with uh, rehabilitating children from the streets. And later on, we decided that we can also help the community around Mutendere. So now we have uh, more than 350 children uh, within the Mutendere and Kalingalinga community who come for the community school. And these children, we also feed them. They have a, a feeding program from PCI who has provided a well food program. But the children whom we keep here at the centre, for now they are 51. And these 51 children, we are keeping them, we have been keeping them since January to date. But now we have got a program for all of them. We have a plan, an action plan for all of them. We want to start tracing their parents. And when we trace their parents, we are going to do psychosocial counselling to these parents so that they accept these children back. After psychosocial counselling, we are going to take these children back to their parents. And when we take them back to their parents, we are also going to integrate them into formal schools where we are going to support them with education materials, uh, uniforms, and other things which they will need. And then that's when we shall withdraw new children to the centre. So you know, these are children, most of them have never been to school, and uh, they've really led a very hard life, and therefore they need a time of rehabilitation and reorientation you know, to school. And uh, therefore, Jesus Cares Ministry provides this uh, education, they provide psychosocial counseling, it provides also spiritual counseling to be helped, to be able to help the child. But when we started the tracing, we found out that most of the children, they ran away from homes uh, due to different problems, like some of them it was poverty, some of them it, it was abuse in the homes, and some of them it was uh, uh, peer, you know, uh, peer by other friends you know, we influence them to go on the streets. So when we traced, we found out that most of the children were willing to go back home after doing the psychosocial counseling and spiritual counseling as well. They were willing to go back home. And uh, we've seen a number of children whom we have integrated back to their families who are staying in the families that they are now successful. Some of them, when they were integrated back home, they were in grade five. But some of them now are in grade eight, some are in grade nine, and some are in grade 10. So that is the success you know, story about the integration of these children. We give these women and uh, caregivers various kinds of skills. And apart from the various kinds of skills which we give them, because most of these, some of the children we are withdrawing are, are crushing stones. They crush stones, so the, the caregivers are given skills. We also give them basic business management skills. And we also give them small loans so that they can continue supporting the children when we integrate them into formal government schools. Tia tia yami kila munga banka ni yava jiza sike yazi, baza mene na tuchi tira, baza mene tia tia tina li, baza first baza mene sne zozi ba na kantu kadi kose, kesi mukana na vana vatu baza mene pano, sve zozi sve zozi enda kuma school. So baza jiza sike yazi na bwata kana na upan, na bwata kambi sana na u. So baku baku kambi sana na u na bwati fuzati. Language 
Kalingalinga Basic School, some of the children we have withdrawn from the stone, uh, some of the children <coughs> seated here, and uh, these children, we are, they have been in our transi transitional classes at JCM Tendere Development Centre Community School. We have uh, put them in transitional classes for six months just to, to remove the mind of the stone, because these children have been crushing stones for so many years, so they are very slow learners. As a result, first we put them into a community school for six months and then we bring them here into the government school. And I'm sure the teacher can say that they are, maybe she can talk for herself how the performance of the children. The performance of those children, at least they are catching up. They are trying their best. But are they catching up as quicker as the others who haven't been in stone crashes? Ah. Otherwise, they, it's, it's slow. It's not, it's not as good as these others. Uh, my uh, statement is really uh, to say that there is a lot of awareness that is needed for us to give information you know, to the communities. Now, obviously, different stakeholders have different roles to play in this fight. Um, media institutions can contribute tremendously through carrying out um, awareness raising and sensitization activities through the media, through the print media, through um, radio and TV for example. The freedom of expression, the freedom of information, eh, those are birth rights. And if we find in our localities the media is not giving us that which we expect. We should not sit in our homes and just start guessing. Let us get out. Let us step out and bring our concerns to the public, to the media management, to the NGOs that are operating within the, the, our localities so that they understand that they are there because of the people, not because of themselves. It is something that we have to fight, all of us. It needs the fight from you know, the community, the government, and also the non-governmental organizations. Even the churches, we have to get involved in this fight so that the child is uh, reprieved from uh, uh, stone crushing. The, the, the communities has uh, important roles to play. It is why ILO policy is to work not only with the government. You know that you are working for in this area with the Minister of Labor as regards mostly the legislation aspect, the implementation of these conventions by the labor inspections. But also we work with the CBOs, community-based organizations, NGOs, and uh, which is are uh, near the, the, the population, which is, um, really have an important role. We, we work at, uh, almost with 13, even more, and NGOs in the rural areas or in urban areas. So the role of the community is important. Unfortunately, you know, this thing is mixed up with, the, like I said, the cultures of the day. You find that many African societies urge children to, you know, learn the ethics of work at a very early age. And, you know, that may be mistaken for child labor also. So it's a very, very delicate issue, you know, that has to be trodden with uh, caution. When you look at child labor, it's essentially a national issue and a national problem that should be fought nationally. So therefore, stakeholders are nations. It's the governments and it's the civil society in the, in the countries that have to work in partnership and also in partnership with international organizations in other countries to fight child labor problems.